let's say that we have some information where you know somebody tells us look your data points are normally distributed with uh, the mean being some parameter theta about which I'm not sure there is something I know but I, I don't have the exact value but but I will I will tell you in a moment what do I know about this and I know the variance it's, it's sigma zero squared and what I know about this mean is that it's about mu you know this, this is a, a constant so you know it's it's mu but I'm not exactly sure whether it's mu or it's around mu but I know that it's normally distributed around mu so with mean mu and variance sigma squared. And so in, in my example here, all of these things, uh, sigma zero squared um, and uh, uh, mu, I, I should probably write here mu zero. So let, let me just, uh, uh, so mu zero, uh, is known and, and also this uh, uh, sigma squared, uh, all of these are known. In the case of the maximum likelihood estimator, the uh, idea was, as we have seen in a previous video, was that you can choose as an estimation of the mean simply the average of the samples. And as a matter of fact, now, when I'm going to open up this um, uh, maximum a posteriori and base, you will see that in fact, in this case, they coincide, but this will become clear in just a moment. But the way you, you think about this is, is going to be like this. So in our case, we have that the probability of um, sample X given theta is, because this is normally distributed, is going to be uh, one over. 2 pi to power n over 2 times sigma to power n times exponential of and we have here minus here we have 2 sigma squared and here we have sum by t of x t minus theta squared And the probability of theta, because this is normally distributed in this way, is 1 over square root of 2 pi times sigma, or, or in fact, um, um, so there is a, I will just correct this uh, example on the fly. This is sigma 0 here, and, and I'm just going to have this as, as sigma. So it's uh, 1 over square root of 2 pi times sigma 0 um, exponential applied to <clears throat> minus theta minus mu 0 squared over 2 sigma 0 squared. And in fact, it can be shown uh, so it can be shown that the probability of theta given x is normal and the ex expected value of theta given x is simply n over sigma squared divided by n over sigma squared uh, plus 1 over sigma 0 squared and this is multiplied by m um, so that's the um, average of, of the samples and we have plus 1 over sigma 0 squared divided by n over sigma squared plus 1 over sigma 0 squared times mu 0. Um, and so I, I just come back to, 
to this uh, to this idea here of the maximum a posteriori and, and base. So the maximum a posteriori was saying, well, give me the most likely value of theta after seeing the example x. But because this is a normal distribution, the most likely one is the expected value. So that's why we have this equality in this case, um, because eventually we get a normal distribution for theta uh, after seeing example x. Um, we have that the maximum a posteriori coincides with the base estimator. And I want to comment about this uh, uh, expression of the expected value of theta given, given x. So the base estimator is a weighted average of the prior mean mu0, uh, which is this one, and the sample mean, which is m. And the weights are being inversely proportional to their variances. And one thing that I would like you to observe is that as we have a, a larger size sample, so a larger n, um, the base estimator is going, to, is going to get closer and closer to the sample average because this one is going to vanish, this one is going to become zero, and this one is going to um, approach one. So as we have more samples um, in our training set, we will get that the base estimator gets closer and closer to the um, average of the samples. Another comment I want to make is about the case when sigma zero squared is small. And, and that is to say we, we have quite little prior uh, <clears throat> uncertainty regarding the correct value of theta. And also in the case when n is small, then our prior guess mu zero has quite a, quite a high effect on, on this estimation. So here is how it goes. And um, uh, how you can integrate the um, prior information you have over theta with the calculations on the average of the samples to update according to the base estimator uh, the value of theta.